It has been a long time. If I'm not mistaken, it has been six weeks since I have been live. I am so sorry. I have some things going on, but it shouldn't be that long again. I do plan to continue to go live every other Friday. So I'm live today, not next week, because you'll be enjoying time with your family for Thanksgiving anyway. But then I'll go live again. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Mom. Thank you for joining me. Sophie. Oh my goodness, you made a YouTube account. You are going to have to give me that information. Are you? What are you going to be doing on that account, Sophie? What are you going to be doing on there, Sophie? And I still have to get you. I have to make arrangements because I know you wanted to read on here. And I got to make arrangements to see what book that you want to read. And then you know how we have to go and get permission from the author or the illustrator or the publishing company to read that book. Damon! Oh my gosh, you're right. Long time no see. Damon, how's third grade? How are things going? I miss you. I miss you. And what grade is your sister in, Damon? Is she in first grade maybe this year? I don't know. Your birthday's in 11 days. Okay, okay, okay. You'll be turning nine. Do you already know what you're going to be doing for your birthday, Sophie? I bet you have some plans. What are you going to be doing? Kaysan, Khalil, King, Queen, hi. How are things over there with you all in Atlanta? I miss you. I miss you all. I haven't seen you all in a while, too, either. But thank you for joining me. You always come on here. Hey, hey, hey. So Ninja, and now his brother has a name, and he's my speedy for this year. I got a new speedy, or maybe I should say I've got two speedies. I don't know if the other speedy is going to come on here, but I got two speedies on here. All right. What are you saying? Almost nine. Yes, Jonas, I know what you. Is, is Ninja watching as well? Adrian, are you watching as well? Do we have both of them? Lizzie, my old student, fourth grade now. Lizzie, Lizzie, how are you? And Lizzie, you have a sister, I believe, right? What grade is your sister in? I think, I know you have a sister. I just don't remember how old she is. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, hi. Hey, cousin Charlotte. Thanks for watching from Mississippi. Thank you for joining me. Yes, 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 yes. Painting Norals. A well with the horn. I have a narwhal book back here. I am not sure if I read it on here because sometimes I forget what I read on here. Where is my narwhal book? Here it is. And you will have to remind me, Sophie, you've been watching with me for so long. Have I read this book yet? I'm not sure. Oh, your sister's in kindergarten. I figured that. Yes. Then I think I did read this book on here. This is one of the more difficult books. It's not the blast off reader like I usually do. Thank you to Bellwether Media for donating all these wonderful books to me. And we're using them in our school. I have it. So Sophie, I will read this book. It's a little longer. I'm not sure if I'll be able to read the whole thing during one session. We might have to do two, but I will read that. I didn't know that you really were into narwhals. That's really cool. I like them too. I like weird animals. Just like I got this weird animal right here. Platypuses. That's a weird animal too. All right. So I am going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've missed you all. I've missed you. I've missed you. I've missed you. So I am going to be reading a nonfiction book. Please go ahead and type. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say nonfiction? Because you know we have fiction books. I've got some of those behind me. We've got nonfiction books. I've got some of those behind me. What's the first thing that comes to your head when I say nonfiction? And I have a clue. I'm going to play a sound as a clue to the book that I'm going to read after 
I get somebody to type what's the first thing that pops in that brain when I say nonfiction real. Yes. Yes. So am I going to be having photo of paintings? Like I'm going to make that connection, connecting something that someone said and making it what it reminds me of something else. And so Sophie says that she's painting narwhals. Well, if she's painting, is that going to be a real picture or photo of a narwhal? Nah. If I were to grab my narwhal book here again, someone actually took this picture with the camera. And this is a nonfiction book. It's real. Real pictures. Don't, don't, don't y'all cheat and read today. Real pictures of narwhals, which as I look at this, I'm visualizing going there. Woo. Ah, I got really cold. Yes. Nonfiction books are real. Nonfiction books have facts. Nonfiction books have photos, not drawings. And now I'm going to click on this. Turn it up just a little bit to make sure you all can hear it. And I want you to tell me, what do you think this is, sound is from? <laughs> well, <laughs> anybody have any idea? What was that? Does anybody know? I'm going to give you all a second to tell me. What was that sound? Did you visualize anything? Did you see a picture in your head? Jungle? Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Before I hold up this book and let you all see what it is. Anything else? Monkeys? Okay. Okay. Any other... It was weird. Are you ready to see it? I'm gonna start upside down. Whatever this is, it lives in the grassland. And I'm gonna turn it around. Hyenas. Did you all know that hyenas made sounds like that? Yep, pretty interesting and weird. Hyenas, animals of the grasslands. Thank you, Bellwether Media, for the donation of this book. Nonfiction books have a table of contents. And these are headings or titles that tell us what information we're going to find. Living grasslands, savanna survival, finding food, and then a glossary. I like to say that's a little small dictionary. Oh, I'm glad you're excited. Yay, I am too. That's like a little dictionary because there are going to be some words in here that are really important and you may not know what they mean. And the people who wrote this book, they say, you know what? Uh, the kids may not know what this word is. So let's put a let's put a little small dictionary in here so they can go and look and they can find it and they can really understand what they're reading. Life in the grasslands, looking at the hyena right here and looking at the color of the grass right here. Someone please type and tell me why is a hyena that colored? And I see this caption, spotted hyena. Hmm. Well, if it says spotted hyena and the caption is telling me what this picture is or this photo is, I'm wondering, is there another type of hyena? Are there more than one type of hyena? What do you all think? I said spotted hyena. But let's find out. Three types of hyena roam grasslands. Did you know there were three types of hyenas? Yes, it would help them to hide. I didn't know that there were three types of hyenas. Did you all know that? Three types of hyenas roam the grasslands. Most like the hot, dry savannas of Africa. Savannas. Well, it says life in the grasslands here in the heading. I'm wondering if the savanna a grassland. Well, this word is in bold. That means it's a really important word. And I can go back here to that small dictionary in the back. I'm going to start back here and go. 
Savannah. It's an ABC order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. Oh, Savannah's. Flat grasslands with few trees. So a savanna and a grassland, pretty much the same thing. This is a flat grassland. Three types of hyena. Well, we see the spotted one, and I guess we can see why it's called spotted. I wonder what the other ones are called. Some of these mammals live in Southern Asia. Well, looking at this map, I'm thinking that should be Africa. Because if you've been in second grade, you should know your continents. And those of you who have been in my class, the song was North America, South America, Africa. I think this is Africa. And this is telling me the spotted hyena range. And a range is an area where they live. Yep. Yeah range. They live in Africa. Oh no, why are you sick? What's wrong? Oh look, we have, here's that caption that describes this photo. We have the striped hyena and we also have the brown hyena. Well, they all look pretty different, don't they? I can tell that they're hyenas. They all have the same face, but striped, hmm. Reminds me of a zebra, brown, and then when I go back here, the spotted. Have you learned anything yet? Speedy hyenas have adapted to the open grasslands biomes. Adapted. Oh, it's in bold. Both of these important words are dark. They're in bold. Let's go back here. Adapted. Changed over time. Let me see here. Speedy hyenas have changed over time to the open grasslands biome, a large area with certain plants, animals, and weathers. Oh, so they changed over time so that they could live here with the animals that are here and the weather that's here. Maybe they looked different in the past. I don't know. Large hearts help them run fast without getting tired. Whoa, a large heart. I guess we can continue to pump and it won't just go, it will take it longer to pump. And they go a long time so they won't get tired. Why would they need to go a long time without getting tired? What would a hyena need to do in order to keep it from getting tired? I love that connection. Savannah survival. Oh, like grassland survival. I guess in this area, savannah survival, they're going to let us know how hyenas live. Maybe we're going to learn about how they adapted. Oh, this caption says burrow. Did you know that hyenas lived in burrows? I didn't know that before I read this book. Hyenas find shade in their hot dry home. They sleep in burrows. Didn't know that. Didn't know that this will sleep in a burrow. The watering holes, they, I'm sorry, they use, let me read from here. They use watering holes to cool off and, and hide food. Wait a minute now. That means that they might put the food in the water and hide it? Oh my gosh. I'm going to make a text to text connection. One time when I was on here, I read the book Cheetahs and Leopards. It's not here. It's in my classroom or else I would show it to you. And I remember that the leopard would climb up into the tree and take its food up there. But looking here, maybe it was the cheetah. I need to bring the book on here. I think it was the cheetah, not the leopard. The cheetah would climb up into the tree and take its food up there. And that reminds me of this saying that they will cool off in the watering hole or they will hide their food there. Maybe if we were another animal, we'd go there to drink and then an animal would come up. Oh my goodness. The caption says watering hole. Looking at this, this photo, I think he's just getting some water. Hmm. Which hyena is this? There are three of them. Which hyena is this? The daytime is too hot for hunting. 
hyenas wait until night. What's that word that means that you're asleep during the day and awake at night? I want someone to type that in for me. Strong eyes help them see in the dark. And they would be waking up about now. It's starting to get night. It's time for them to get ready to wake up. And a couple of hours, we'll be going to sleep. What's that called? Special adaptations. Oh, those special changes that make them be able to live here. Sharp teeth. Strong jaws. Large hearts. Yes, sir. They are nocturnal. Thank you, Speedy. They are nocturnal. We are diurnal. We're awake during the day and asleep at night. That's called diurnal. Let's see if we can find out some more about them. Oh, my goodness. They do live in the same place. That's right. Lions also live in Africa in the grasslands. Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Who would win? with the hyenas and I'm visualizing that laughter that you heard. I'm visualizing the hyenas making the loud sounds and I'm visualizing the lion's roar. Oh my gosh, all this noise is going on. If I were a giraffe or if I were a zebra, I'm running far away. I'm gonna let them fight. I'm getting out of here. Who would win? Let's find out. Let's see if they tell us. Hyenas must be smart to compete with lions for prey. Oh, prey. Well, I know that that's the food that they eat. Wait a minute. They want to eat the same thing. So they can't be in that same area at the same time. They mark their territory to guard hunting grounds. Oh, territory. Let me go back here to that glossary real quick. This is it's an important word, territory. I'm going to start at the bottom to go find the tea. The land area where an animal lives and hunts. They mark their territory. This is mine. Mine. And there's the lion. She's saying, this is mine. And they're saying, this is mine. And now they have to figure that out in their animal way. I see a caption here describing this picture. And here I see, looks like the spotted hyena again. Here I see one, two three, four of them together, and it says clan. Someone please type, what does clan mean? It says clan, and I see one, two, three, four of them together. What does clan mean? I'm going to wait a second and give you all a chance to type it for me. What does clan mean? What do you think? And have you learned anything? I always learn things when I read these books. You ever want a book from about nonfiction book, visit Bellwether Media. Their books are amazing. If there are any teachers watching, you can find them on Nearpod. They're already uploaded up there. Maybe them together. Spotted hyenas use sounds to communicate with their clans. They whoop and can be heard across the, the grasslands. Well, we just heard that at the beginning. Hmm. I think you're right, but we can always go, those important words that are in bold, we can always go back into the glossary to be sure. Clans, groups of hyenas that live together, very good. Communicate to share information and feelings. We heard some communicating at the beginning to know how they're gonna attack, very good, very good. This is a diagram, spot it, Hyena stats. Okay, let's see. I see green, least concerned. And then next to that, I'm trying to see if you all can see it. There we go. Near threatened, vulnerable, endangered, critically endangered, extinct in the wild. Oh my gosh, that means it must only be in zoos and then extinct. So if extinct is like the dinosaurs, which means they're no longer living, and the hyena is way over here. Do we have to worry about them disappearing or becoming extinct soon? Let's look at how far away they are from extinct. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're six steps away. I think they're okay. 
conservation status, that's what that's called, least concern. Lifespan up to 25 years. So they live to be about 25 years old. Finding food. All right. They live in Africa. And we found out here they're on the same hunting grounds as the lions. You know, this is really, really, really reminding me of a movie. What was that movie? Lions and hyenas competing for the same area. What was that movie? I guess that movie was right because we're finding the facts in this nonfiction book. What was that movie? Mazavenya. I really don't know the word. One young. What was that movie? Somebody tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Real quick. Yes, the Lion King. Now, what type of food? Finding food. And then this heading says spotted hyena diet. So when I move this, you're going to see what they eat. When I move this, you're going to see about them finding food. What type of food do you think that they eat? In Africa. In the grasslands. Waiting for an answer. He's got something, or he or she got something there. Almost finished eating. This is the end of dinner time. It can be hard to find food on the savanna. Hyenas eat everything they find. Everything. Here we go. Gazelles. Wildebeest, zebras. Did you all think of any of those? They can eat up to 40 pounds in one meal. Oh my gosh, 40 pounds? Some of you might weigh 40 pounds or just a little bit more. One meal. Hunting, oh my gosh. Now we already read earlier that he can run for a long time because he's got a big heart. Oh my gosh, he's trying to get the zebras. Hyenas use powerful jaws and teeth to survive. Spotted hyenas use them to hunt animals like zebras. Oh my goodness. There's absolutely no meat on there at all. Oh, this is the striped hyena. Glad I learned that in this book. Striped hyenas are scavengers. They prefer carrion. They even eat bones. Bones. Have you ever eaten a bone? No. I guess the spotted hyena likes food when it's alive. The striped hyena, let, let's look at what these two words, those important bolded words. Scavengers. Animals that mostly eat food that is already dead. Carry on. The rotting meat of a dead animal. These different hyenas like to eat different things. Live, already dead. Oh, I really didn't know that. I thought they all like to eat dead animals. But they did talk about hunting at the beginning. Let me go back. It said something about them hunting. It talked about the big heart for hunting. Oh, it talked about, wait, let me see here. Speedy hyenas, so I guess they're speedy. Hiding their food in the watering hole. I thought I saw hunting. Oh, there it is. The daytime is too hot for honey. Hyenas wait until night. So if he's hunting, he's not going to want the dead ones. You've never a bone before. <laughs> but he's eating a whole big old bone like that. Look at that. Those look like the babies, and the baby has that bone. Hyenas have strong stomachs. They can break down almost every part of an animal. Every part. And they eat everything. And the striped ones eat the bones. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, no. There is nothing on the grassland hyenas cannot eat. Oh, okay. 
And that's the end. Did you all like this book? Hyenas, Animals of the Grassland, Hyenas. Did you all like this book? If so, tell me something that you did like. If no, tell me what you did not like. What do you all think about this book? About the hyenas, the three different types of hyenas, the spotted hyena, the striped hyenas, and the brown hyenas. What did you like, Damon? Tell me what you liked. I know you said you were excited. I hope you remained excited all the way to the end. What did you like, Ninja? Ninja is, I, I, I don't remember if you said it earlier. Is it both Ninja and Speedy? Or is it just Speedy? My new Speedy. Who is it? Is it both of you? What did you like? What did you like, Sylvie? Somebody tell me something that you liked. Something that you learned. Tell me something. Tell me something, please. Or something that you didn't like. Or something that you learned. Tell me something. Tell me something. Tell me something. Please. Okay, both of you all are looking. Ninja, I miss you. I miss you. I need to see you. You're probably really tall now, Mr. Fourth Grader. You rated a, a 9.5. Well, I'm going to make sure that I let Bellwether Media know that you rated it a 9.5. I love their looks. And why you all, hopefully somebody else will tell me. Uh, parents, if you're on here, I offer reading tutoring. You could visit me at freeyourgreatness.com or keishayearby.com. Go to my website. I offer tutoring. I offer read-alouds. I offer storytelling. All the different facts that I learned, and there are different kinds of them. Yes, that's what I thought was very interesting. And I want to know, the next time we read, do you all want a fiction book? Or do you want a chapter book and we go back into Zoom? Type that in there for me. I probably should stay on here because I haven't been here a lot, but I can let people know. Do you want a fiction book on here or a chapter book in Zoom? Type that in the comments and I'll see what you all are saying. We have a couple of minutes before I let you go, let you go. Yes, that they bury their, they have a home, they have a burrow. Yes, they have a burrow. I didn't know that. I also did not know that they might put food in the water. I did not know that they would hide their food. They're very interesting to me. Chapter book. Okay, okay. Let me see what a couple of more people are saying. Chapter book. Chapter on Zoom. See faces. Okay, okay. Well, I've got two for two for a chapter book. All right. You know what we have to do. We haven't done this in a, long, in a long, 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 long time. I think it's been six weeks. So I want you to think of something that makes you happy. Something that now that you all are all back in the school and someone might be saying some mean things to you, what can you think about? What can you do? What can you watch? What can you listen to that will make you stay in peace? I have that in my classroom now. Stay in peace. What can you think about? I want you to get that in your head and I want you to lock it in. Now, I want you to think about something that you did that you were proud of, something that you may not have thought that you can do. And when you did it, you felt so happy. You said, yay, I did it. I want you to get that, get that in your head. And I want you to lock it in. So you should have the thing that makes you happy. You should have the thing that you did that you're proud of. I want you to lock it in, lock it in. Inhale. Exhale. Smile. You're beautiful. Thank you all so, so, so much for joining me. We will be back in two weeks. And most likely, I'm not promising, but most likely we will do it in Zoom where we can see each other's faces and we can do the chapter book and we can engage. The, other than you all typing, typing, you can talk to me. I hope you all have been having a wonderful time. I hope everyone is doing well in school. Report cards are coming out. Chesapeake report cards came out today. So I hope everyone's doing that. Yes, yes. Lock it in, lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. I hope everyone is doing well. I want you all to have a wonderful time next week with your families. And I will see you the week after that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. <laughs>